Well, coil spring. Can you make a knife out of it? Let's go find out.
coil spring pretty much uh, performed exactly like I thought it was going to perform. You know, I mean, there was no real surprises here. Uh, except for the control. The control was a little bit of a surprise that it actually broke instead of bent. Now, maybe uh, we didn't quite get it uh, annealed good enough. What probably should have done is. We should have done some heat cycling, some normalization, but that's not what this whole series is about. It's about can you harden it? I think it performed exactly like it was supposed to. It did break, so but it did bend first. Now the water quench, the initial water quench was really good on this. Uh, I'm not advocating to quench your cold spring in water, especially at the temperature we did. We actually did um, probably around a 1600 degree water quench uh, on this, which was very high for water. But we're looking to get like an absolute like shatter crack. And when you compare the pre-temper versus post-temper, you can see right away that it broke along an existing crack that happened during the pre-temper test and absolutely colored everything on the inside. I mean, just, it is blues and, and purples and yellows all the way through this thing, and that's not how it's supposed to be. So this thing was pretty well shattered all the way. Now, whether that happened when the hammer hit it or it happened at when, it, when it careened off of something as it flew through the air, um, we don't know. But yeah, way too hot for a water quench. And then if we look at the, the oil on this coil spring, the, the pre-temper, the, we, our actual quench was perfect. Maybe a little hot, we could have backed it off just a little bit more. Um, but when you're looking at grain structure here, the, the grain is, is really fine, like really, really fine. And it didn't take much at all to, to snap it um, pre-temper. And when, if you look at the post-temper grain structure, it's just, to me, when I'm looking at this, we're going to have to take a look at it blowed up on the video. But they look different. The, the post-temper looks a little finer, a little silkier, a little better, and it took multiple hits. I mean, that thing was solid. Um, and, we were, and we were hitting it pretty hard. I was, I was, I was going to break this. And if it, that last hit on the post-temper, if it hadn't broke, I, I was going to go to the sledgehammer, but it, it broke. Um, that is an incredible result. So can you make a knife out of coal spring? Absolutely. Uh, I would go with the oil quench. Um, relatively low, you know, quench temperature. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I was right around 1600 degrees, maybe high 1500s, you know. Uh, it, you, you can get it down to like the 1525, uh, 1550, you're going to be right in that sweet spot. You'll, you'll, you just won't break it. That's my, uh, my thinking. You won't break it if you nail that, that quench temperature. And then we, uh, we, we tempered these at 420, as you saw, for two hours. So for, for this type of steel, I don't know what type of steel it is. Uh, without sending it off and getting it, uh, having an analysis done on it. But uh, at 420 is where I uh, temper all of my, my spring steels, you know, especially the repurposed spring steels. So absolutely, you can make a knife out of coil spring. Stay safe out there, everybody. Be well. And as always, forge on.